Evelyn and welcome back to my floss tube channel for floss tube episode 8. I'm Evelyn across the pond here on YouTube and over on Instagram and this is a channel where I talk about cross stitch and all things crafty. We have quite a few other crafty endeavors in this particular video. Bit of knitting, bit of sewing, some exciting new things. I know I'm a week late this time, um, but I posted over on my Instagram last weekend that I got the second dose of the vaccine. So I took the weekend off to kind of just like rest and relax and everything. I had gotten my chapter in as well that I was writing. So Nico and I took kind of a vacation at home for a few days and we've just kind of been hanging out in things. So it's been three weeks since my last video. So as you can see, I have an absolute pile of stuff to talk about today. So get excited. <laughs> in other news, now that I've had the second vaccine, I think I'm uh, a couple of days, like I, I'm about a week since I've had it. So it's about a week to go before I'm fully protected. Although since I am immunocompromised, I'm still less protected than a normal person would be. Um, but you know, we got to work with what we got. I have booked a hair consultation appointment. I'm so excited. I think I'm going to get balayage and be very millennial. I also have gone to a local crafting store. So there's a lot of haul in this video. Just forewarning. <laughs> I went on a walk with a friend. I still wore my mask because safety first, but it was very nice to see someone in the real world. And I'm just feeling really hopeful. Obviously, the news of the way that COVID is going in other countries right now is really concerning. So I'm trying to stay positive that we're on, we're on the way out. In terms of other things. I have my Stardew Valley Junimo shirt on. If you play this game, you understand. We've gone casual today because honestly, I thought about getting cute, but there's literally so much to talk about that it would have held us back <laughs> too much. It is Friday, April the 23rd. It's 5.45. I'm filming quite late today. It took me a, a while to get moving. <laughs> this is kind of a special video because our community, our little corner of Floss Tube, now has 3,000 people in it, which is just insane. So thank you. Thank you very, very much. I'm so happy that you all choose to come here and spend a little bit of stitchy time with me. And if you're new here, I hope that you like what you see and that you stick around. I don't want to make this a channel about numbers or whatever. So I just want to say thank you. And there will be a surprise later on in the video in this particular case. So stick around for that just to say thank you. Thank you so much for welcoming me into this community. It truly is a community. Everyone is so kind, so generous. It, it's honestly been the highlight of my year and of last year. <laughs> In terms of leftover admin from the last video, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who gave me suggestions for places to go around Philly. I have now gotten my offer letter, like official offer letter for the fellowship and it is still relatively up in the air whether or not or how much of the fellowship might end up having to be remote due to COVID. I don't know how things are going to go in the next few months. They kind of said that we'll touch base middle to end of summer to kind of talk about how that is going to go down. So we will see. But for everyone who did give advice and places to go and offered to hang out, you all are awesome and I would love to. <laughs> so yeah, fingers crossed. We'll see. We'll see how that's going to go at the end of the summer. Also, one more thing I wanted to say, this is going to be a very long video, just FYI. <laughs> so strap in, you know, tea, whatever, or as Kathleen just said in one of her recent videos, you know, energy drink, let's go. I was thinking whether or not it might be fun in the next video 
to have a bit of a Q&A section where, you know, if there's anything you wanted to ask me about my life, um, like a person, like, you know, to the realm of reasonable personal questions or about how I stitch, you know, how I track things as like apps that I use, whatever, what kind of my setup is like, how I stitch, like my actual stitching methods etc you know anything like that I thought it might be fun so we haven't really done that here on my channel and since there's quite a few of us in here now <laughs> it, would, it would be fun I think to I don't know have a little Q&A section I don't know if it would be to the extent of Darcy with the ukulele I unfortunately don't have the ukulele so but you know ask me anything <laughs> as Darcy would say, or sing rather. In terms of the sort of lineup for the video, we have quite a few different things. So we have Material Minute as per usual. If you are new here, I am a PhD student in early American history and uh, every video I kind of do a little segment, a very short kind of segment where I show a historical object and talk about it because I do material culture, which is basically the study of objects in the past and what they meant in people's lives. So we have that. We also have a couple of cross stitch whips, although I was more monogamous with those whips. So there's not actually that many, but I worked on them for a very long time. And then I have some sewing finishes that I'm very excited about, which were kind of foreshadowed on my Instagram stories. And then I have actually a knitting finish, which is also a start because you haven't seen it before. And then I have another knitting start. And then I have happy mail. I have a load of haul. I have some goodies for you all and then we have some plans for what's gonna happen in May and all that jazz. So let's get into it. So first up for Material Minute, this week I decided that we would talk about embroidery but in a different form and I've been seeing like over on Instagram and stuff through some hashtags and things I've been seeing a lot of Bargello actually I think Shelby Stitch by Shelby is doing a Bargello purse which is really cute I think it's Hello Bargello is the name of the brand that's by it's like a kit I'll put it up here if I can find it but go over to Shelby she's adorable and she shows it so anyway I've been seeing this a lot and I've seen it in also I don't know if you all have <laughs> through my readly I have Molly makes the magazine and there's been quite a few little projects that they've had in there for like make your own bargello like pot or whatever like a plant pot you know house plants so anyway I found a pocketbook from the 18th century that is Bargello. <laughs> so I thought I would show you that embroidery in kind of a different form. So this is actually called canvas work. So in sort of the 18th century, what we would call needlepoint today was called canvas work. And this particular example of canvas work is a pocketbook from roughly 1750 to 1780 from the United States. And pocketbooks were sort of like a cross between a wallet and a purse. They could be carried by both men and women, including the embroidered versions. There were usually kind of two different types of pocketbook. There were leather pocketbooks, which were more common, although they are, less of them survive today because leather is a lot less durable than some of the needlework projects. And then you have your embroidered pocketbooks, which were often done by women for either themselves or their family members, their husbands, their friends. They are great examples of different types of stitches and just very intricate patterns and they're really colorful. So this particular example is held at the Windsor Museum Garden and Library. One day I will get to go to Windsor in person. And this particular pocketbook is an example of the Irish stitch, which is now called Bargello, but in the 18th century would have been more commonly known as Irish stitch. The stitch essentially looks straight up and down like a vertical stitch on the front and then a diagonal stitch on the back. So instead of having the tent stitch go over one 
thread it goes over or like over one weft essentially it'll go over three to four I believe and it was usually done in cruel yarns rather than in like silk or cotton threads and the Irish stitch in particular is well known for its sort of diamond vertical pattern which is what um the Bargello kind of 70s trend that's coming back is all about as well and it's I just think it's cool because you know I've seen a few of the magazine articles talking about Bargello being like, oh, look, the 70s are coming back. <laughs> I wanted to be like, the 1770s are coming back. <laughs> so uh, this particular one has sort of a tie close. So they're essentially pocketbooks were like, an envelope basically like how a wallet is and you would carry sometimes money but also um, important papers your keys some women would carry like sewing accessories in their pocketbooks anything that you might you might need to bring around with you and women also had pockets which I'll put a picture of a pocket here essentially petticoats in the 18th century didn't include pockets like pants do. Pants, the American word pants, the British word trousers, not talking underwear. <laughs> and so for women to have pockets, they essentially had separate pockets that they would tie on underneath or some, I mean, sometimes they could be visible, but usually underneath the petticoat. And then there was a slit in the side where they would be able to reach in and put stuff in the pocket. Um, but they weren't in part of the bottom, if that makes sense. They were like a separate item. Well, pocket books for women would fit inside of their pockets. So they were like an extra kind of pocket within the pocket. Whereas for men, it was more like your your wallet. But I do want to point out that it, there were men who would have carried the fancy embroidered pocketbooks as well. That was not like a feminine style in the period. Now this particular example you can see on the sort of inside flap here the colors are kind of muted whereas um, on the back you can see kind of more the brightness of the of the yarn. I'll see if I can add in a picture with kind of a zoom in on the stitches because you um, these are pretty high quality images from the museum so you can see the individual stitches in the canvas. I just love this design. I think it's so beautiful. And it is a, a tie close, like a wrap close, as you can see from the front where you kind of would wrap the the envelope shut and um, tie it off uh, basically. Whereas there are other pocketbooks that had like metal clasps or I've seen some that have like handles. I've also seen some that are part diary. So like when you open the envelope there's actually like a like a diary sewn into it which could be either like a personal journal form of diary or like the British word diary meaning your like planner essentially and I just think that these are really beautiful there are examples of ones that are signed this particular one isn't signed so I don't and I don't know anything about ownership or like location or anything like that of the family but I just wanted to show you guys kind of the way that sort of needlework trends have been recycled over the centuries so yeah that's our material minute for whips I'm so excited I have some I have some good progress this time so like I said excuse me I'm just gonna keep turning to this um this location over here so I oh Y'all, y'all know what I forgot, don't you? You know what I forgot, my board. I swear to God, will I ever remember this board? So like I said, I only worked on three whips, but I actually spent a lot of time on each one of them. This first one, I think I literally spent like a week on this project. So this is my Hello Petal by Caterpillar Cross Stitch. This is where you saw it the last time. I'm doing this as a sort of like informal sal with Morgan, Honeybee Stitcher, Mary, Mary Ashcraft, and Sean, Craftivating Creations. Mary, Sean, and I are all doing slight variations. I know Morgan will also be doing some, I think just based on like seasonally because she is down under and spring is at a different time of the year. Easter is not in spring in Australia. And and for my particular color conversion, 
I will show you kind of what I'm working with just off of the, the floss ring. So I've gone for a bit kind of brighter spring colors rather than sort of the pastel kind of colors. I'm not going to share my color conversion just yet because I want to make sure that it works on like the whole tree and I'm happy with it before I do it because I might need to change things and I don't want to tell you to stitch something that then's not going to look very nice. So that is coming. I've essentially figured out what I'm doing just by drawing on top of the chart <laughs> colors that I think would look nice and then kind of playing with those. I'm using all DMC and I have done honestly about about a third of the tree. So I've done the rabbit. I've done him in grays rather than the pinks in the chart. And then I've done the tulip in an orange. Uh, basically, I'm really happy with it so far. Although I think I am going to have a lot more pink on this other side of the tree, like these darker pinks, which then will kind of tie this in more in case that looks kind of stark. It's because this is pink up here. This is pink over here. This is so yeah, the tulips are going to be pink, orange and yellow based on the tulips that I have in my house. I've done the Easter eggs as just like regular bird's eggs. So this one is sort of like a creamy white egg. This one is a brown egg. And then the one up here is going to be a robin's egg. Actually, let me show you what the chart is going to look like when it's finished. Like the, not the colors, but just the chart. So yeah, so this egg up here will be sort of a robin's egg. The chick I'm keeping the same essentially the mouse is going to be two browns rather than gray and brown. And then down here, the sheep, I'm doing a slightly different tone for the sheep's wool. And then the bird with the Easter eggs in the basket, I'm going to do these same kind of more natural eggs in there so that it'll be more obvious as well that these in blobs in the tree are eggs <laughs> because they'll be copying this eggs. I'm still toying with what color I wanted to do the bird. I was thinking like based on the, I wish I could show you what I've colored, but it just gives away the chart. So I can't essentially the bird that I've picked because of the colors that I'm using here, I kind of wanted it to be this kind of corally pinky orange to kind of pull some of that down into the bottom of the chart. However, it looks kind of weird that way, considering that I've gone for the more natural colored bunny and the more natural colored mouse to then have a pink and orange bird. That's not like a flamingo, like it's just like a songbird essentially. So I'm a bit iffy on the bird. I think I'm going to leave that until last and see what I'm thinking. But so far I'm really happy with it. And to be completely honest, I just couldn't put this down. Like I kept being like, oh, I really should pick up something else. And then I kept stitching on it. I'm doing this on 28 count white cashel linen. I did her other trees in well, other trees, what am I talking about? I did Hello Dear <laughs> in Even Weave instead of the linen, but I kind of prefer linen for 28 count. So I've gone with that and I'm really happy with it, but it'll be the same size, which is why I kept it as the 28. And the plan is to hopefully maybe get a finish before Hello Sunshine. I know Hello Sunshine, the pre-ordering starts at the end of this month, but I think we don't actually start stitching it until the end of May, which means that I might totally be able to do this because I could not put this down. All of the tiny little leaves and stuff, it's such a satisfying stitch. Like Sean, Sean and I have talked about this before because each one of these is like a little finish. So you feel all excited and you're like, oh, well, once I get to this one and then I'll be like, oh, but I'll just do this leaf too. And then like, oh, once I get here, I really am going to stop. And then next thing you know, you've like done the whole half of the tree, which is <laughs> what I did. So my plan the next time I pick this up is to come up here and do the chick and the top of the tree, come down and do the mouse. And then we just have the bottom left. And I did a lot better job on my margins this time 
because my margins on Hello Dear were, in a word, frightening. I had about like a quarter of an inch on one side. Yeah, that, it was it was a dark time. But this, this is going to be fine because <laughs> I'm going to finish it the same way that I did Hello Dear, which if you haven't seen, I think I showed that in my very first video, I did like a little easel finish. Let me actually, you know what, I'll take a picture of it where it sits on the downstairs bookcase, like the easel so that you can kind of see it in motion. Well, it's not in motion, but in action, let's say. I really am enjoying this and I'm I'm pretty pleased with my conversion so far, but yeah. All right, next up we have Visit Hobbs. So essentially after March Madness, I was kind of in the mood to like, you know, work a bit more monogamously than I've been doing in Madness, but pause for tea. I was in the mood to stitch a bit more monogamously, but I kind of did enjoy that Madness like picked for me what I was supposed to do because it was like kind of scheduled or whatever. Cause I think at some point, Sometimes I feel guilty about my whips that I haven't touched. Whereas if the choice is taken out of my hands, then it's not like my fault I didn't pick it. <laughs> that sounds really silly out loud, but whatever. I'm, I'm sure you know exactly what I mean. So I've decided that unless the, there's something like that I need to be doing because I'm doing a particular kind of like stitching event or whatever, like stitch mania or senia or monogamania or whatever, which we will talk about at the end of the video in plans or like madness or something. Or if I am like doing my sales, the, the ones that actually have like releases and stuff rather than just like me and my friends are stitching this, join us. <laughs> so then those will kind of go outside of this. But for times when I'm just like working on my whips, I think I am going to start doing a whip rotation with the Tiny Decisions app. I'm sure you've seen other people use this. I'm filming on my phone, so I can't show you it on my phone. I'll put a picture kind of of like what the app looks like. I have iOS. I don't know if it's on Android. I would think it is, but essentially it's just like a rotating wheel and you like spin the wheel and then it lands on a project. And my plan for the rotation is I think every like three days I'll spin again. Cause that seems like a good, like I'm going to see some progress in three days, but I'm also not going to get like bored of it. Whereas if it went much longer than that, I might sort of start having, you know, the squirrel element where I'm like, Ooh, but what about this? Uh, <laughs> so I was able to spin it once in between my work on Hello Petal, which I just couldn't seem to put down after we started that on the first and what I worked on next, which is catching up on my sows. So what I spun for my one spin <laughs> that I had was Visit Hogsmeade. This is a chart by Country Magic Stitch. It is full coverage. I have it on Pattern Keeper, so I'll pull it up. So here's what it'll look like. It's like a cool kind of vintage travel poster of Hogsmeade. I absolutely love it. This will go on my Harry Potter wall. I don't know if I've ever told y'all how big it is. It's 128 by 176. So on 14 count, it would be like nine by 12. I'm doing it on 16 count. So I think it'll be more like eight by 10. And I'm just doing this on 16 count white Ada. I am doing parking-ish and color completing-ish, sort of like within, within smaller sections. I am trying to kind of like fan out the edges so that we're not getting like super intense marks. It's still in the Q-snap because I kind of just keep this one in the Q-snap. And I actually wrote down, so when I started working on this, it was at 3.89% and I had 877 stitches out of the 22,528 in the chart. And when I finished, I was at 2,128 out of the 22,000. So that was 9.45% percent complete. So I went pretty hard on it for the three days that I worked on this and I will show you now. Let me just pull back the grime guard a little bit so that you can kind of see the top corner better. So this is where we are. So I think the la oh last time you saw it. Okay so the last time that you saw it I think I was like still up here kind of in the blue and I hadn't done any of the mountain. The chimney was like partially in. 
So since then, I filled in most of the this part of this mountain. I've started kind of on the side of the building, sort of there's a window right here. Um, I have a few parked threads. And then I was just doing blue fill-in. So basically this whole like till like literally like over here is blue. And then there's a t tiny mountain and then it's just blue again until the end of the chart. So my plan is essentially I would like do something fun like the corner of the mountain or something and then I would put in two threads of blue basically and then I would do something fun and then I would do some blue because I know myself and a hundred percent if I didn't keep myself in check I would have done the entire bottom of the chart and then left myself with all the blue at the end because I didn't want to do it <laughs> and I wanted to do the fun part and then I would leave myself with the torture and pain of uh, zillions and zillions of stitches of, I think it's 940, no, 927. That's what it is. So instead, I'm kind of trying to do it as I go and then I'll sort of do the bottom of the chart last. So sort of work across and then down. But I'm really pleased with the progress that I made on this. And I just absolutely love the art style in this chart. Like, can you even look at how this mountain looks? It's so beautiful. Oh, I just love this chart. Let me just, I'll zoom you in a little bit. And I am doing full cross on this. This isn't, I'm not doing tent stitch. And I like the little snowflakes, the little white snowflakes. Oh, it's just beautiful. Yay. So I'm enjoying this full coverage. All of the country magic stitch, like fandom-y kind of charts are just really cool. Like the designs of them are just really cool. So that's my progress on Visit Hosmead. I'm very happy with that. And then last, but certainly not least, I fell behind on the Frosted Pumpkin Christmas Wreath style during May, uh, March Madness. So for the last few days and until I'm caught up, basically, I'm working on this. So I was two parts behind clues five and six, which I'll show you what the released chart looks like right now. So the part all the, both of the parts above Santa's head essentially I was I hadn't done so I'm actually just stitching them as one rather than like one after the other you know as they were released I'm kind of just stitching it as like one whole section to try to get it done and I went ahead and actually did the greens in the background first and like blocked out the wreath and then I am now filling in the individual ornaments and motifs and stuff and it looked super cool actually when it was half done I put it up over on my Instagram I'll, I'll like screenshot my my post here but look how cool that is. Like, uh, I just thought it was really cool the way you could like see the shadows and stuff. I find that really cool. Like, what is, what is the word for that? I know Shiloh said it in one of her recent videos, but sort of like how in Jacob's like Modern Folk Embroideries, Sal, the negative space makes the, makes the image. I just found that really cool. But now I'm in the fill-in stage. So this is where I'm at. It's still in the cue snap because I'm stitching on it. So basically, like I said, from here up is parts five and six. I think it cut off kind of like here, essentially, but it doesn't matter because I'm doing it together. <laughs> so when I stitch these, I actually like to color complete just because, I don't know, there's something about like the cute DMC comfort stitching motif vibe I just color complete so I have obviously done the greens and then I've done the pink both of the blues and the mustard yellow and then the gray and I think when I go back downstairs <laughs> once I'm finished filming I'm going to do the light yellow and kind of like fill in the star the bottom of this is light yellow there's some light yellow spots here and then the outside of this ornament is yellow and then i'll probably do the oranges and then maybe the white you know whatever whatever i'm feeling i have my uh caterpillar cross stitch needle minder on this one because of christmas and i absolutely love this chart I love the Frosted Pumpkins Christmas designs. I actually have, like, obviously this is months in advance, but I'm thinking I'm gonna do like a Frosted Pumpkin Jolly July. 
I haven't thought of a cute name for it. Like I need to think of a cute name for it. Something frosty. But that I'm always so jealous when people think of like genius months, you know, like Elizabeth Ann had like sampler September and like, you know, whatever. And I just am like, what am I going to call Frosted Pumpkins Jolly July? If you have an idea, put it down below. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm thinking of doing that because I like how all of the their Christmas charts kind of like go together in a way that actually would be a really kind of cohesive Christmas decor. Like the ornament that I did a few few episodes ago from March Madness. Also all of the other ornaments that they put out in like just cross stitch and stuff. My little nutcracker pillow that I made. But in particular the Christmas sampler that um, Situation Normal is doing. I love that one. The little gingerbread village with the countdown. I have this like vision of doing it as kind of like a Christmas countdown thing where I can like cross them off and stuff for forthcoming. <laughs> also the Nutcracker Parade one. I definitely want to do that. I have to have that. But anyway, so I can't wait to have this pillow done and displayed with all of those whenever they're done and just have like a whole frosted pumpkin Christmas decor. I just absolutely love this. The only change I've made to the chart so well I mean I guess I haven't seen the whole chart so maybe I would change something else but the only thing I've done is I made Santa's mouth like two squares smaller because I thought it was cuter with the the teenier smile. Just a personal preference thing. The gingerbread girl I don't think I'm going to change her mouth. I kind of like it how it is. And the star, I'll leave that as well because um, I didn't change it on the other star. Oh, but this just makes me so happy to stitch on this. I just love the colors. And I love the dimension in the greens. I know I've said this before, but like there's three greens in the chart. So it's sort of this darker shadow one and then the main green and then the the lighter green and I love the dimension in that where you can kind of see the sprigs coming up out of the wreath I just love that and I think I've said as well that this is supposed to be like inspired by vintage Christmas bobble ornaments you know the ones that are it's like Santa's head from like the 50s or like these kind of ones where this part you know it almost looks like an apple that you've like taken a bite out of those ornaments where like the front face is kind of like concave like this that's what these are and I just love it so cute so so cute so that's the whips that I worked on in terms of other crafting though I have finishes so first up let's do sewing because this is very 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 exciting so I finally ordered fabric I went on a bit of a fabric spree I'm not gonna lie but finally it was it was in the budget we went fabric wild and I have made project bags following our dear dear Liz Elizabeth Ann Can Stitches project bag tutorial video. And I also made sort of like a side goodie to go with them. I made two. And actually, they were for <laughs> two of the projects that I've just showed you, which I sneakily didn't uh, show you the bags yet for. <laughs> so the first one that I made is currently housing Frosted Pumpkins Christmas wreath. And this is my first bag. I made a project bag look at it isn't it beautiful mm. okay sorry I'm like distracted by its by its beauty I just love these fabrics so first off I should say I got all of these fabrics from Lovecrafts I will show you all of the ones that I got in haul but I'll just like talk about the ones that are actually on the bags now so this fabric is from the cider collection by Moda these kind of cool sort of like retro colored diamonds I really like that and then the main color that I used is from uh, Melody Miller and the Ruby Star Society and I don't know if you can see that yeah it has like a sort of like the gold is metallic and kind of reflective and it's just this pretty floral and so I used those and I did what Liz does in her tutorial, which if you haven't followed this tutorial, you have to. I've had a few people reach out to me and say that like they, after they saw my stories where I talked about that I was working on them, 
where they were like, oh, I don't think I could ever make that or whatever. Like I don't have enough sewing skills. Honestly, I had never sewn a zipper before when I made these and I did it. And her tutorial was so clear, so easy to follow. Liz is an absolute champion in terms of like telling you how to do something. Also, she had very clear, like on the screen, she put up on the screen all of the sizes that you would need. I screenshotted that. It's like saved on my phone. So yeah, you can you can totally do this. I will put her video in the description box below and I will also link it in the cards of the video in case you're like a computer, computer viewer or someone who uses the cards. And essentially I did what Liz does where it's sort of a contrasting fabric on the top and then your main fabric on the front and the back. And then on the inside, it is the contrasting fabric again, but then the top of the inside lining is the outside fabric. So I copied that. And I used this sort of corally pink zipper. This is a 14 inch zipper. The bags are sort of supposed to end up being somewhere between an 11 by 13 and a 12 by 14 based on whether or not you cut correctly. <laughs> Lining this up at the top so that the directional pattern of the fabric worked how I wanted was tough, but I did do it. I think this this first one that I made, I think I had to seam rip like three times, but we got there. And it was very good because I learned how to use my zipper foot finally on my sewing machine, so yay. And then, and then the little accessories that I made, and I'll show you that with the second bag as well. I made little pouches to go inside of them, little zipper pouches. These are, I think I did five by nine. So they're kind of like an A5 size, basically, if you're like, if you use UK paper measurements, essentially so that I could hold my extra flosses inside, just because I have obviously my like floss rings or thread cards or whatever it is I'm using for that project. But then what I tend to do is I keep the extras or like the full skein of that color in the bag as well in case I need to cut more at some point. But it was making my bags like super messy and the flosses were getting caught in things. So now they live in their little accessory pouches inside of the bag. So I used the outside fabric for the outsides and then it's a zipper and the inside is the lining fabric. I used, basically I kind of made this up as I went, but it was based on a blog post from Melly Sews, which I will link below that then I kind of changed the size of and all that jazz. But this first one, the zipper fought me on this one. The zipper fought me. So when I made the second bag and the accessory bag, I was like super, super careful with the cutting. And I think part of the problem that I was having was that my cutting board was too small. So I ordered a bigger cutting board, which then made it a lot easier to get the second bag more precise. And I will show you those cutting boards when we get to haul. But this bag ended up being like exactly the same size in every stage. Whereas with this one, when I went to the part where I was like, basically there's a part where you're sewing the linings together and then the exteriors together, and then you're matching them up and sewing down the sides. And in that part, mine like didn't match up at the bottom at all. So I had to like cut off quite a bit to make it even like almost like half an inch. But this one, I didn't have to cut it at all because it ended up being even. So thank you, new cutting board. So this bag is my second bag. And this is holding my Hello Petal. And this top fabric and the lining is from the same cider collection by Moda. And then this blue is from the Folktale collection by Moda, which I've been obsessed with. That's It's been like my my like unicorn fabric. And I finally got some of it, yay. And so the little pouch for this one is the same. We used an orange zipper on these two and there's the inside. Oh, I'm so happy with them. I'm very glad I made the little pouches. And I also had like the 
forethought with the second one to make the bag and the pouch at the same time so I wasn't like cutting everything and then sewing it and then being like oh I need to like cut everything again I just kind of did it as one thing which actually made the process more fun because then at the end I had like the full set already the one problem that I am having with these is the interfacing that I got. So I've seen some people say that they didn't get interfacing that was like high enough of a loft for these and that they're too floopy. That is, that is uh, luckily not the problem that I'm having. I went with a high loft interfacing and so they're, they are pretty, they are pretty sturdy. I mean, they'll like, they will bend, but they're not super bendy, which I'm happy about. The problem is the brand that I got, which I will talk about now, even though it's like haul, but it's relevant to this. So I got the Heat and Bond High Loft because the brand that Liz recommended, I couldn't find from Amazon in the UK or from another store. So I went with this one because it had good reviews on Amazon or whatever. And I was like, okay, but... <laughs> Liz said in her video, you need to be careful about the like fusible fleece that you use because you don't want it to bubble on the fabric. I don't know if you can see that, but this bubbled to high heaven. I kept having to like pee, like sort of try to peel it up and fix it again and everything. It ended up okay. Like it's not horrible because I was able to kind of fudge it in places. Oh yeah, there you can see it. Can you see this in the shadow? Yeah, I was able to fudge it a bit, so it's not super noticeable. But what I wanted to ask is UK Stitchers, what do you use for your fusible fleece, web, whatever you want to call it, that doesn't bubble and is, yeah, because like, look at this. Can you see that? Oh, it annoys the crap out of me. So what do you use that doesn't you do this? Because luckily I, have used up all of this but this like tiny little scrap so I need to get more anyway so I don't need to buy this again <laughs> or is this actually great and I'm just using it wrong which I kind of doubt because I have used other fusible web before like my medium weight and my low weight that I use on the back of stitching for like pillows and stuff like I've never had that problem with it so yeah what do you use this is you know floss tube friends help me but project bags Woo! and basically now I'm gonna make a hundred zillion that's <laughs> I'm just like obsessed with them I want them for every project look okay yay remember when I started my channel and I was like I don't have any project bags and now I'm like <laughs> I made them myself that's what I love about this community everyone's so encouraging for you to like learn new things and they're excited with you when you're excited about it. I just, oh, I love it. So before we get into the just oodles of haul and happy mail and other exciting things, we have knitting. Now, there are some things to talk about with the knitting. Now I know the last few videos I've shown you my wool in the gang um, good times blanket. I put like two rows into that of just the same pink so you can't really see a difference so I'm actually not showing you that today <laughs> what I am showing you is a start and finish and a new cast on so let's start with the start and finish y'all a hundred percent came through on my questions for how do I learn increases and decreases and these suggestions like the main two suggestions were a hat and dishcloth and so the projects that you will see today are dishcloths and a hat <laughs> so my two finishes were a pair of dishcloths look I made dishcloths hmm. so for these this is the Very Pink Knits, like classic dishcloth pattern, which is a free pattern. I will link you to the post about it below. And she also has a tutorial video about it on YouTube. So I will link that below as well. It's like from like nine years ago or something, but it was super useful. And essentially it was knit on the, on the bias. 
So it was all increases and then all decreases. The increases were through yarn overs and then the decreases was knit two together. And I really like that I did this one because I like the way that the yarn overs make the kind of pattern around the edge. And I did this one slightly smaller. So this one, I think I only did 40 stitches across. I think it calls for like 50, but I think I did 40. And then for this one, I did a slightly bigger. So this one, I think I went for either 44 or 50. One of the, one of the two, but it is bigger. I don't know how much you can tell that. Maybe if I like, ah, oh yeah, here you go. Here I've like lined them up. And I can see, yeah, I think it, I think this one's like 44. So the main change that I made to the pattern, which I can't believe I'm already making changes to patterns, but the ones that she did have like the square corners, like they're like this and they don't have a hanging loop. And I wanted to be able to hang them because Nico and I have in our, in our kitchen, there's like a hook where we hang dishcloths on and any of the ones that don't have a loop on them end up immediately on the floor because they like don't hang properly on the hooks when they don't have a loop as I'm sure you all know. So I was like, by God, these will have loops. So I learned how to do I cords. So I made an I cord loop on the end of them. Once I got to the part where the pattern wanted me to bind off, I just did an I cord and then bound off and then tied it. I like secured it or whatever before I, um, and then weaved in my ends and everything. I haven't blocked these, washed them or anything, which is something that I will do, but I just wanted to show you. And for these, they are cotton, which was the recommended for dish gloss. And I got the Paint Box Yarns Recycled Cotton Worsted. There was a sale on Lovecrafts on the recycled cottons, I think for like sustainability and Earth Day and whatever, like a week ago or something ago. So I got these. Um, this one is in sea green and this one is in steel blue. It's kind of like a bluier gray, um, which you can't fully see in the lighting. And they call for a US seven slash four and a half millimeter needle. So that's what I use. And I have loads left so I can make all kinds of stuff. I might use them for tea towels, but yeah, we'll see. So that's my little finishes. Yay. The other thing that happened is there was a sale on Wool in the Gang and they were having huge discounts on some of their like smaller kits that were either going out of stock or were getting like rebranded or whatever. And one of them was 20, 20 pounds maybe for a hat. And I was like, sold. So this is the little wonder hat. This is the packaging that it comes in. This is the little wonder hat and it comes with, I got the kit obviously, and it comes with a ball of the feeling good yarn and the pattern and the sewing needle and the same kind of tag that I showed in the time that I did a Wool in the Gang unboxing. I'll like link that video as well. I didn't get the needles this time because I have my lovely pro set that I showed from my happy mail from last time. And so the color that I got was mellow mauve, 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 mauve. Sorry, Mary. <laughs> so this is the feeling good yarn, um, calls for a US eight and it is a 50 gram ball, 70 percent alpaca, 7 percent merino, and 23 percent nylon, and it's from Peru. And it is super soft and quite squishy, and as you can see it's kind of, it's quite fuzzy. And so I cast this on last night, and it's knit from the like rim up, and it's also knit flat as well, but I'm knitting it on circulars because I like the circulars. So I am in the rib section. So I did long tail cast on and then now I'm doing a rib and it's quite stretchy. Ta -da! And then this will eventually wrap around my head. <laughs> so yeah, and the base of the hat is stockinette and then it comes up into like a pom pom at the top. But I'm very, very happy with this. Learning my knitting skills, you know, I'm getting there. What I need though, as I do need to find a pattern that uses like knit front back for increases because the only increases that I've done is yarn overs. You know, that's on the radar. So 
we're getting into the haul section now. First up, let's do sewing haul. I'm gonna actually split haul into sections. That's how much haul there is. I must be stopped. And the one thing that I wanted to say is that I include like everything that I got in these, including like little side tools and stuff, just because I really like when people talk about tools in their videos. I'm like a tool person, you know, so like I want to know what cutting boards people use and you know, all, all of that kind of stuff. So that's why I show it in my videos. So I will be doing that today as well, as opposed to just like charts that I got and stuff, which I did get charts because yeah, I can't be stopped. First up from Amazon, I got these huge bags of zippers. These are all 14 inch and these are all nine inch, I think. And they come in a variety of colors. I will link these below. It was very good, I think, for the price to buy in bulk. I think they ended up being like nine pounds-ish. So like $12 maybe. So these were good for having zippers in various colors. We have already talked about the need for a different usable situation. I picked up some tracing paper because there are some sewing patterns that I've seen in like Molly Makes and stuff that, you know, you trace the pattern out of the magazine. So I got some tracing paper. This is just the Clover brand. My quilting ruler is the So Easy laser cut and it is six and a half by 24. So I got two kind of doodads for my quilting ruler. Number one, I do need to get more quilting rulers the more that I do like patchwork and that kind of thing. But for this one, I got some little non-slip um, bumps to put on it. These so easy fabric grips so that my ruler stops sliding around. So that was great. And I put it on both sides because, you know, yeah, I'd flip it. And then I also got the So Easy Quilters ruler handle. And it's like a suction cup. And then you kind of can press down on it while you're cutting to keep it even. The suction cups are like not the most suctiony of suction cups, but they do work. And for the very minuscule price that I paid for them, I'm not really bothered by it. So, and then you can move it around. And if you know, you were using multiple different rulers, you can kind of like suction it to different ones and stuff. So I got that. I got a bobbin storage box from Hemline. So I have three bobbins in there right now. <laughs> Quite patriotic actually. It's a uh, red, white, and blue. <laughs> but yeah, so I have a bobbin box now. I also got some core bond elastic. This is the six millimeter. Um, because I want to make myself some grind guards. I haven't made any yet, mostly because I was waiting until my bigger cutting board came in because it needs to be like four times the length that you want plus two inches. And I use mostly an 11 by 11 Q-snap with my Lowry stand. So suffice to say, I'm going to make some grind guards. So I got some elastic. I also got a Clover water erasable marker. Pretty sure I already have a heat erasable marker. Although the one that I have isn't labeled as like what it is. Like it's just a pen, which isn't super helpful when it's like in the sewing bag to know which one it is. Um, whereas this one does say water erasable. So that'll be good. So if I can't figure out what the deal is with that other pen, I think it's actually just air erasable because it starts to disappear over time. So I think it's just air erasable, but regardless, adding to my sewing pen stash. And then Liz mentioned in one of her more recent videos that she is working on a vinyl project bag tutorial that will come out at some point. And in preparation, I have bought some vinyl. <laughs> So this is the By Annie's Premium Clear Vinyl. This is the same brand that I bought the Soft and Stable for that I used on my sewing tray. So I got some of this so that I would have it. I think it's 16 by 54 is how much came with it. And I got this off of Amazon, so I will link that. So then I also got a little mini sewing iron, like a quilting iron. It's super teeny. I don't know what I can compare this in size with there. <laughs> so it's, it's quite small. And it does have a steam function. And it comes with, with this little bag. I got this off of Amazon. It comes with this little bag with like an extra like foot on it. I really liked it for like pressing out seams and for using an iron on stuff that's smaller rather than having your iron be like four times the size of what it is that you're actually trying to iron. However, because we live in like a 19th century 
sort of row house cottagey house when I plugged this in in our living room while we had the lights on and the fan going and the xbox on it blew our fuse whereas our regular iron doesn't do that so this must be a bit of a power suck based on its size now i'm not saying that it would do that in a newer house or in your house or whatever obviously i don't have a sewing room so i was sewing in the room where all of the rest of our stuff was turned on as opposed to like in a room where this was the the main source so I'm not saying that this is this is a negative review. It's just more like it did blow my fuse. But I do want to try it out up here while other stuff is going on and see if it'll like pop the pop the fuse up here. Our house isn't like so old that we have like the literal glass fuses where you have to like replace it. I mean, we just like flipped the switch back on, so it's not that big of a deal, but it did mean that I had to use the big iron again, which was like fine because that iron works, but I was just very excited about my tiny iron and unfortunately that did not happen. The next sort of sewing thing was, and I mentioned these, my new cutting boards. So I got these both from Amazon. They are the Ansio brand. And I got one that, and they have Imperial on one side and Metric on the other. And they are A3 size. So 11 by 17, five layers, and they are self-healing in addition to being double-sided. So I got this one first, and this is the one that I made the first project bag with. And the issue is it's 11 by 17, and the project bag is 12 by 14, what you're supposed to cut out. So I was having like fabric hanging off the side, and then it was like fudging it when I was going to use my, my rotary cutter and everything, and it was just a mess. So I bought a bigger one. Although this is great if you were working on like small little like six by six patchwork squares or something, this is perfect. It's just because I was making something bigger, it did not work for me. But we don't have like, like I said, I don't have a craft room. So I had to get something that like we could store. So I couldn't get like the biggest of the cutting mats. So I went a size up and I got this one which is a dark blue on one side and a light blue on the other side. And it's the same brand and it is 23 by 17, I think, or 22 and a half by 17. And what I liked about it as well is that the little cutting things that it has on here are actually really useful. So there's like a 12 and a half by 12 and a half, a six by six and a two and a half strip, which was really useful because for part of Liz's pattern, you need two, two and a half inch strips so I use that and this my with this my cutting became impeccable so I love this thing it is huge so as you can see I'm like <laughs> awkwardly holding it but yeah totally worth it very pleased with these I will I will link that below fabric time so like I said I got all of this from love crafts if you are a UK based stitcher slash sewer slash knitter slash crafter and you've never bought from like fabric from Lovecrafts before, they actually have a really good selection. With like cross stitch stuff, their selection is like okay. It's really good for DMC, but they don't have like loads of different types of like charts, like how, you know, Patrick Rabbit does or something. They have sort of like Bothy Threads kits and some DMC kits and things like that, but they most, mostly just sell kits. So if you were looking for loads of different kinds of patterns, they might not be for you. But fabric wise and knitting wise, they have loads of yarn. They have loads of fabric. I got my yarn from Lovecrafts. So I will not include the fabric that I've already showed you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is also from the Moda Cider Collection. This is kind of like fan sort of. It's more teal in person than it's showing up in the video, but I thought this would be cool to go like inside of a bag maybe. And then the rest of these are from the Folktale Collection and I got a lot of them. <laughs> so we have sort of the uh, a pink version of these smaller flowers with little little dots and the mustardy color. I love these colors. It reminds me of the folklore album. And then I got this same design but in the mustard. And then I got the polka dots, the mustard one, 
the kind of darker sort of I don't know what color you would call that kind of like a sort of like if red and mauve had a baby that's kind of best color and then <laughs> this is a sort of light peachy pink so I got the three polka dots because I thought these would be great for inside of bags and stuff and then the main outside fabric that I got for that like for outside of bags is this one so this is from the folktale collection there's other ones that I want to get eventually. This is the folktale fabric that like drew me in the first time I saw it. I just love this. So I'm kind of saving this for the vinyl because I want it, like a really, really special one. But yeah. And I got like a meter of everything. So I have just loads. Of I also got, and this Liz suggested this to me on DMs to get the little mini charm pack of the folktale collection. So it has all of the different, let me see if I can like flip through it for you. Can you, can you see this? So my plan is to make one of the like patchwork back project bag along bags that she and, oh, I can't remember who the other person is. I will put it on the screen, I'm sorry. I'm gonna make this out of this, which I'm very excited about. So that then I can kind of have all of the colors. And then if there's one of the other fabric choices that I decide I'm like absolutely in love with, then I'll go up, it, go back and order that as like a, like a big size. But I love it. So this is one of the next thing I'm gonna do to kind of practice my patchwork skills. Cause I've never made anything with patchwork. Pattern haul, I bought some patterns because I'm me <laughs> and um, I've come to the conclusion now and like Sean and I talked about this, but like if I see a pattern that I really love and I know I'm gonna stitch it, I'm just like, let's just get it now because like Lord knows if this pattern goes away and then I'll be sad for forever. So they are digital patterns. So the first one, what I actually mentioned, I think in my last video, because I saw it in Julie, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World's not most recent video, cause I'm like one behind now, but her one before that. And she showed this as a previous finish. So this is the Girl Scissors and Sewing Machine by Little Room in the Attic. And all of that gold is gonna be Krynik. I love this, oh, it's so cute. I've gotten the fabric for this, so I'll show you that now. This actually does work on Pattern Keeper, so it's in Pattern Keeper right now. I bought from Chromatic Alchemy. So this is from Chromatic Alchemy. It's a 32 count Belfast linen in the color Rubescent, and I got a nine by 12 cut. So I'm gonna stitch her on this. I think it's gonna be beautiful. Oh, I can't wait. I ordered the Krynik from 123 Stitch because I've been trying, this is the same Krynik that I used on some of my Christmas stitching from my first video, 002HL. And that's what it calls for in the pattern. And I've been trying to find this in stock in the UK for about like 6,000 years and I just cannot. But it became available on 123 Stitch. So I, order some of this and I also got the 001 HL the silver the high lusters so I got these this is just for stash because I wanted silver crinic but this is the call for in the pattern so I have that now and I think on Sunday Nico and I are going to well, I'm dragging him, but we're going to have our first uh, venture to hobby craft now that it's open. And I'm going to get a bunch of DMC to kit up little patterns like this. Because I think, I think I have a lot of the colors, but not all of them. So this will probably be a start in the near future. Eee! I just love this. This came relatively quickly as well. And this 9 by 12 cut was only £4.50. So like the next chart that I got was, I'll put a picture of it here. It doesn't have a front cover. It is a Animal Crossing chart, a Celeste chart by Scrixel Stitches on Etsy. I'll link it below. And this also works in Pattern Keeper, so yay. And it just calls for DMC. It's gonna end up being nine and a half by nine and a half, basically, on 14 count. I just ordered actually some fabric for it. This kind of like galaxy print from 
not pole stitches, but crafty kitten maybe. So whenever that comes in, then I'll have that. So I was kind of in the process of kitting that one up as well. And then I also got, this is actually an embroidery pattern and it is a Stardew Valley pattern. So this is, <laughs> this is a Junimo from the game. They're like little, sp little sprites that help you on your farm. And this is the, this is a Junimo holding a star from the game. And the game uses like 8-bit kind of graphics. So it looks like this. And I absolutely love this. And it's all just like satin stitch. So I think I have the recommended colors, but if I don't, I'll pick them up at Hobbycraft. This will be a really, really quick um, little embroidery finish, but I just want this and I want to hang it up here in the office because I love Stardew Valley. It's like my favorite game. Also one of Nico's favorite games. It was like one of the first games that we kind of played together. And while I was looking for that one, I was like looking at Stardew charts and this one came up and Nico has always found this very funny. There, You can make your horse in the game wear hats. It's like a farming simulator kind of game with like a bunch of other really cool elements. It's much more than that, but you know, for a cheat sheet version for people who don't like video games, but you can make your horse wear hats. And one of the hats you can make your horse wear is this sombrero. And Nico has always thought it was just absolutely hilarious that this horse can wear this sombrero. And while I was looking for patterns, lo and behold, here is a pattern of the horse with the sombrero. And he saw this and he was like, can you make that for me? <laughs> so, so I'm gonna stitch this for Nico. It'll take me like literally a day. It's so small, literally, it's like 70 by 75. And it does use um 18 colors though. So like, it'll be nicely shaded, um, which is exciting. And this is by A Stitch to the Past off Etsy. So I'll be getting the floss for this if I don't have it. Usually, I know like sometimes I will just sub with DMC that I do have, but other times I really do like to get the call for DMC just to build up my DMC stash because at some point I would like to have the full set. So usually I will kind of be like, well, I'll just get it and then I'll have that color. So then the last pattern that I got was, I finally picked up Autumn Town by Autumn Lane Stitchery. I got this off their Etsy shop. I got the PDF version. And the really cool thing about this chart, I mean, number one, it's like just beautiful. I love Aaron's designs. Aaron and Cassandra are just the coolest. But also the green in the grass, that is the fabric. So it calls for um, mountain air autumn harvest, maybe, or something like that. And all of that green is actually just the fabric. So I really do want to try to get that fabric. I haven't found anywhere in the UK that has it. I think Peakside has like one or two mountaineers, but they're, it's like Egyptian desert or something like that. Egyptian sand maybe. Um, So it's, it's not this particular color, but I just love this. This is going to be one of my fall stitches this year. And they mentioned in their most, their most recent video that there's a potential that they will have d towns for different seasons, which was very exciting to me, <laughs> but I've been like wanting that chart since the first time that I saw it. So I finally just caved because treat yourself, treat yourself 20. 21. That's Parks and Rec reference. <laughs> if anybody didn't know that. I got another pattern thing. So yesterday, Nico and I went on a walk, which was very exciting. And we went to our favorite coffee shop in town and got like a takeaway and then sat in the park and drank our coffee and had a little cake. And it was very nice. And just in, if you ever go to Cambridge, our favorite place is the locker. It, we actually had our first date at the locker. <laughs> like ages ago we got a coffee but it's just a really cool little like coffee shop kind of place I just really like it also the owner does just in terms of crafting and makers and things the owner actually does ceramics and so all of the like cups in the in the locker and like the little sugar holders and everything all of that is made and um made by the owner they're really beautiful you can buy some of the mugs one of my friend got one I, I really want to get one at some point but anyway we got to take away from the locker and right next to the locker is a shop called sewn it craft and it is like a sewing and knitting shop here in Cambridge, like a like a family owned business. It doesn't have loads of cross stitching, but it does have it does have floss like it has DMC. And so I have gone there in a pinch when I'm like, crap, I ran out of 310 or whatever. I will go get it from there. And now that I'm into knitting, 
I got some, you know, I've gotten some yarn and things like that. I've gotten some sewing things from there. Well, anyway, while we were in the locker yesterday, Nika went in to order. And while I was standing there, I was looking in the window of Sew Knit Craft and I saw... Emma Congdon, Stitch Rovia's Cross Stitch for the Earth. And I went inside the shop because number one, I wanted to go in there anyway, because I was like, I have both vaccines now. I'm going to go into my craft store. <laughs> and I picked up some other things, which I'll show in a second. But the guy was helping another lady. And then he came over to me and he was like, hey, you know, is everything going on? By the way, if you are in Cambridge, you should shop there. They're really great. They're super helpful. And I think during normal times, which I haven't actually been in normal times, they do like like sewing events and stuff and like classes and, you know, whatever. So it, it would be really cool to kind of go to some of those. But anyway, the guy came over to me and was like, hey, you know, are you finding everything all right? And I was like, Yes, the Emma Congdon book in the window. Where can I find those? Because I'd been looking around and around and I hadn't found any. And he was like, oh, well, that's the only one that we have, but you can buy it if you want. And I was like, so <laughs> if you haven't seen Mama Loves UGB's flip through of this, I will put a link to it below and in the cards if I can. But I will just show you. So all of these are earth themed patterns and actually and I I didn't know this but it says on the back that the price of this book includes a donation to Friends of the Earth an environmental campaigning community dedicated to protecting the natural world and the well-being of everyone in it and I think that's really special especially since yesterday was Earth Day and all that jazz and climate change is real and we need to protect our Earth. These are the charts that are included. I'll just like hold it like this for a minute. Again, d watch Michelle's flip through, but just like with her first book, they don't have names. They just have like design numbers. So I'll have to invent names for the ones that I want to stitch. But I thought I would show you just quickly the ones that really have my eye. I don't know if I'll stitch this, but there's something about this one, the way that the go is the background. Like her designs are just insane. Stitch Rovia is so talented. I really like this one. Live gently upon this earth. I really like the colors in that. I think I'll probably stitch that. And then the one that I like have to do is the earth has music for those who listen. It's a Shakespeare quote. I love the colors on this one. I want to put this up in here in the office. So I think this one will be the one I stitch first. Once I finish like a, like a medium sized um, project that I have going, I'll probably start that, but I'll, I'll probably kit it up when we go to Hobbycraft. Um, just cause again, it's DMC. So that's the perfect kind of thing to buy at Hobbycraft. That was a weird voice I just made. So yeah, this is definitely worth it. Here's the back in case you wanted to go. And I paid $16.99 for this. I got it. All right. And then knitting wise, I forgot to talk about this. Um, I ordered an additional size of my symphony. So I ordered a 4.5 millimeter for my interchangeables because I think the ones that were so lovingly sent to me were a three a four, a five, and a six, I think. So I wanted to get a four and a half. So I just got that off of Amazon. And then while I was at Sonic Craft, I got some yarn and I got sock yarn. Look out Shiloh, I'm gonna start knitting socks. <laughs> so I got three. Oh my, I'm just making a mess. All right. <laughs> That's the thing about floss tube is like afterwards, this room is literal, just like explosion of stuff. So first up, I got this Osterman step in the, let's see where I can find the color, color number 324. It doesn't have a name. And this is their sock yarn. And you can see this is what it'll knit up like, which I like that design. I like these colors. And it is... 75% superwash merino, 25% polyamide. And then the second one I got is Katya Socks Bombay 2 in this kind of, I liked the ply of this a lot. And it's kind of like these different shades of purples, super squishy. And this is in the shade 
color 73. And this is 41% cotton, 39% wool, 13% polyamide, and 7% polyester superwash. And then the last one that I got, and the the guy who runs the shop said that this knits up like absolutely beautiful socks. So I'm super excited about this. This is the Superba Cashmere Luxury Socks. So this was $12.50. I don't know if you can see that. And this is their four ply sock yarn. And it is like, oh my God. It is so, I can't even tell you. Mm. God, it's so soft. So this is 65% virgin wool, 25% polyamide, and 10% cashmere. This is this was like my bougie purchase. I was like, ooh, I'm gonna get the cashmere. <laughs> so these are for me learning how to knit socks. This one, obviously, I'm gonna save for last because this is like the fanciest one. And I asked on my Instagram stories for like people's favorite beginner sock knitting patterns. And I screenshotted all of the responses. A lot of people said like crazy sock ladies, vanilla sock patterns, Susan B. Anderson's how I make my socks pattern, the lofty loops pattern, like vanilla sock pattern. So gonna be investigating that. I kind of want to finish my hat, but I might cast this on anyway. We'll see. Pick one of them or something. Maybe this one first. But you know, the only way to learn how to do it is to just dive in. Am I right? So I'm getting a bit of a uh, bit of a yarn stash now. And then the last sort of random. I have two random items, and then I kitted up a project. So this is <laughs> some glass spacers that I bought from Brampton Framing so that I can put this one I frame at home to get the glass up off of my stitching. For some of them, it doesn't really matter to me that much, but for like my Hello From This Matthews Loved By You, I want to have that for like the rest of time. So I'm gonna be going back in and putting this in there. And then I also got, this is just a little tool thing because Pam and Steph talked about this in one of their videos. <laughs> I can't remember how long ago it was, but it's the seam fix. What's cool about this is when you have to frog, you use this and it like gets all the fuzz up off the fabric. Because obviously I, I tend to just frog with my needle because I've, I've never really had to like frog so much I had to seam rip it. Apologies for if the lighting looks weird. I just had to switch to Nico's camera because my phone has run out of everything. So the this is like to get all the fuzz up off of it. And the one time that I did have to seam rip with this, there was fuzz everywhere. So I'm very excited about this. Especially for like dark colors, you know, like a green or something. And then there's like green fuzz all over your fabric. And then the last thing is also a plans thing. So Morgan Honeybee Stitcher and I have decided that we are going to do a sal for the Hello From Liz Matthews Quakers. So, so far she has out Quaker Pumpkins and Quaker Snowflakes and we're starting with Quaker Pumpkins. And essentially this is just going to be like a start along and then just over time as they come out and as we work on them, we'll use the hashtag. Please, if you've been wanting to stitch those, please join us, join in, use the hashtag. Everyone is welcome. If I ever say that I'm doing a sal, that is basically your invitation. Please join me. <laughs> so we are going to start this on May 1st and Morgan and I have been kidding up. So I have the fabric and the flosses for the chart and I will show you now. So the fabric that I got is actually from XG Designs and this is 40 count. So this is my first ever 40 count and this is 40 count Little Bunny from XG Designs and I got a full fat quarter. Is that the right color? Mm, that's more like it. It's kind of like a peachy sort of neutral. Absolutely beautiful. So excited to stitch on this. Honestly, extra designs she can do no wrong in my opinion so this is my first ever actual fabric from her and I'm so excited and as per usual she sends like a little sample so this is her 18 count Ada in old sheep just in case you wanted to see so she sends a little sample with my pom-poms that I got from her she sent me a sample of her 40 count in like coffee or something but anyway, so this is the fabric that I'm going to use for Quaker Pumpkins. And then the flosses, I've got all the called for weeks flosses. 
and I bought them from my girl Carla at Patchwork Rabbit, which I don't know if you saw, but Mama Loves You GB has a like a, a special link um, for Patchwork Rabbit now if you if you've came to Patchwork Rabbit from her. So I will, you know, put that link below if you are interested in showing Carla the kind of like Michelle floss tube traffic that we're getting because the only reason I shop at Patrick Rabbit is because of Michelle so so these are the flosses and here they are on the fabric so you can kind of see the vibe is that not like super fall I love it I'm just needing to go on the little fostering I made oh gosh I'm ah I'm knocking everything alert alert so that's kind of the vibe we're going for, a floss toss, if you will. And I will tell you what colors it is. The call for is cognac. It's like a burnt orange. Tiger's eye, which is like a pretty variegated yellowy brown. Sweet potato, which is like a pinky orange variegated. Carolina Cecil, which is like a reddy orange pink variegated. These are all very much in the same kind of um, tones. We have gunmetal, molasses, which is this beautiful kind of cool tone brown. And then pecan, which is like a warm tone tan brown. So I will be starting that on May 1st and then I'll kind of be stitching it whenever I feel like. Like I said, it's like a start along. I'll probably stitch it more in earnest come the fall, but Morgan is currently in fall, whereas I am in spring. So, you know, we have to make it uh, work seasonally. And when she told me that she wanted to start it i was like um well hello i have to join you i kind of want to make a project bag for this right now it's just in here oh also i did get these little a5 wallets for the same purpose as the little accessory things from amazon so i will link these below it's like from the same the same as these other ones that i have well this part is very exciting though so this leads into the special part of the video so with the Hello Trees from Caterpillar of Cross Stitch. As I showed earlier, I have been finishing them as sort of these like easel stands with pom-pom trim around them. And I've already done Hello Dear, but I wanted to get the colors that I already knew I wanted for Hello Pumpkin and Hello Petal because they've both been released now, right? So I, there was some Lady Dot Creates um, mini that I wanted. Now the, I think the Hello Dear one that I have is full size pom poms, whereas now I've gotten some of the minis. So hopefully this still looks good on the easel since it's like, it is gonna still be an A4 tree. So like, hopefully they're not too small, but I think they'll be fine. And even if they are, I know that I like the color now. But anyway, I've been trying to find, it's really hard to find Lady Dot Creates in the UK. And the one store that I found it from that didn't have like absurd shipping was actually from Lindy Stitch's shop. And so I placed an order for Berry Crush, which I'm going to use for Hello Pumpkin, and Witchy, which I'm going to use for Hello Petal. And then I'm thinking based off of the teaser colors for Hello Sunshine, that one I'm probably going to do a uh, like a bright teal kind of tropical blue but that's what I got for these two so anyway so I ordered that from Stephanie at Lindy Stitches and she sent me an email and was like hey you know the I haven't shipped anything over there since like all of the Brexit VAT stuff happened and also since COVID and everything so like Hopefully everything goes off without a hitch, but like, let me know if there's a shipping issue or whatever. She's just very good customer service. So then when it got here, which was super fast, it was like less than a week and I opened it and she had sent some extra stuff. So she must have figured out it was me. And so she, first off, all of her orders come with this, like a little thank you card with then a little, a little chart on the back. Um, that was very quick, but a little mouse with a floss. So anyway, so this was with it, um, with my order. And then she sent me just the sweetest note saying, you know, 
that she watched my channel and everything and that she wanted to send some happy mail for me and for you. So basically, this kind of transitions into the surprise portion of the video now. Yay! So to thank you all for continuing to spend stitchy time with me, for joining me more recently, if you've come more recently, for sticking around, for giving me such, <laughs> for, oh man, I, I can't even put it into words, for giving me something to be excited about this past year, for being my friends. I want to do another giveaway. So for the 3,000 subscribers, there will be three giveaway winners. And you will be receiving some Lindy Stitches charts. And I'm super excited about it. I love Stephanie's stuff. As you know, I'm doing the birds, the kissy owls. We love to see it. That woman knows how to chart a bird. I tell you what. So I will show you the ones that were for me first. And then I'll show you the three that you can be trying to get. Okay. So first up, she sent me beautiful things, which is, says, oh my darling, it's true. Beautiful things have dents and scratches too. I've been wanting to get this for about 6,000 years. So I am so excited to stitch this. This is going to be an upcoming start for me. I think maybe at the end of the, at the end of the spring time, because it's just, I just love the, I love the message. And also this bird, look at this bird. She has such a unique style as a designer and I just love it. Especially the way that Steph does like animals' faces. They have such personality. It's She's so talented. And the other one is Beach Dance with these little blue-footed boobies. I can't not get over them dancing like that and their little feet. It just, I don't know. I showed this to Nico and he was like, no, that is a good chart. And I was like... I know, right? So I will also be doing this. Thank you so much, Steph. Yay! Oh my gosh. The happy I was honestly, I was floored like that she knew it was me first off. <laughs> and then she like sent a, this is just okay. So for the giveaway, there are three charts. There will be three winners. There are 3,000 subscribers. And two of the charts are some of Stephanie's expo releases. But the first one is a, a cult favorite, I believe, which is Autumn Royalty. So this is the one with the Lord of Gourds, Prince of Pies, and Count of Candy. I've seen lots of people do this. I know Erin to Martini Stitcher is starting with Prince of Pies. She's going to do all of them. This is just adorable. It calls for weeks and DMC on Picture This Plus Shale, but obviously you could use whatever you wanted. So this is the first one. And the next one is her new Edna Goes to Brunch chart which this is from her Lindy Stitches backyard bird along that she does in her Facebook group where you like post pictures of birds that you see in your backyard and then one of them wins like her favorite bird and then she designs a chart around it. So this is Edna going to brunch. I love this. She has these little crazy like ear whiskers that just or something else. I hope you can see that. This is on Mint Splash Lugana from Zweigart with Weeks and DMC. And then the last one, and this I believe, actually Steel City Stitchers have been doing a sal for this. This is the Hedgehog House in the Happy Habitat series. Look at this little hedgehog on this little house. Also tulips. <laughs> Y'all know how I feel about tulips. And this is PTP Feldspar using DMC. And it's finished in a little tart pan. How freaking cute is that? All these little tart pan finishes that people are doing, I'm they speak to me. I need to like, this is the other reason why I want to go to Hobbycraft is like, I want to go to their little house stuff section and like do that thing that people, everyone does where they're like, oh, here's this thing I got from like, you know, Hobby Lobby that has a saying on it or whatever. And I'm going to turn it into like a sled that I put cross stitching on and stuff. I just, I'm really hoping Hobby Craft does tar pans is the moral of the story. Okay. <laughs> I'm distracting myself. Sorry. 
giveaway time. I'm so excited. It's just so exciting that like, not only to receive happy mail from people, which is just so kind, but then to be able to send happy mail to you. Thank you. I love you guys so much. So if you would like to win autumn royalty, then I would like you to use the word prince in your comment. Prince like king, prince, queen. P-R-I-N-C-E. And I will be using the random comment picker. We'll do the giveaway the same as last time. And then you can just DM me your um, address on Instagram or you can send it to me by email if you win. But use the word prince for this one. That's what I will be looking for in your comments. For this one, use the word hedgehog. And for this one, let's use the word brunch. God, I love a brunch. I can't wait till this is over and I can go to brunch. Mm, I really miss brunch. So we'll run through that again. Prince for Autumn Royalty, brunch for Edna Goes to Brunch, and Hedgehog for Hedgehog House. And in your comment, let me know what you're most looking forward to this spring. Yeah. What you're most looking forward to this spring as the weather gets better and you know it stops like snowing in places because some places is still snowing and everything let me know what you're looking forward to this spring with all of these cute animals and to stephanie thank you so so much for sending me all of these this is unbelievable kindness and i'm so glad that i get to pass on the joy to my wonderful wonderful friends my floss tube friends so i will draw that before my next video in two weeks time we'll be going back to two weeks i'm not doing three weeks again that <laughs> i've had so much stuff so in two weeks time i will pull the winners using random comment picker it'll be like the last time i ran the giveaway please don't use the word giveaway in your comment don't say free or whatever you know the the general floss tube spiel <laughs> please do be a subscriber of my channel i want to be giving back to the people who are actively participating in our little corner of floss tube and uh yeah make sure you use the word in the comment hey editing evelyn dropping in here just to say that this giveaway is open internationally and i will send your gifts anywhere in the world the last thing is plans. So like I said, I'll be starting the Hello Quaker Sal on the 1st of May with Morgan. Hello Sunshine from Caterpillar Cross Stitch. Pre-orders open for that on the 30th of April. So I will likely be purchasing that immediately. <laughs> and once I see the um, like preview shot, she's already, Sally's already showed the colors so far, but I want to see like the little I assume it's going to be the toucan. That needle minder. Oh my God. Let me put it here. I have to have this. So anyway, so I will likely be getting that and that will involve some kidding up. Like I said, I'm going to be kidding up some of those Etsy charts I just showed. Um, so that's in my plans, maybe starting one or something. We'll see. In terms of mania, sania, monogamania, every mania for the month of May, I am really debating how I want to do Mania. So I definitely don't want to do 30 starts because like emotionally, I just can't handle that. But I also don't want to not participate because I feel like I'm going to have FOMO. I like already feel that I'm going to have FOMO. And I really, really enjoyed doing March Madness with everybody. So what I'm thinking is that I will do a Stephanie Lindy Stitches sort of stitch sania where instead of starting a new project every day, you work on one project during the week, like an old whip that you need to get some progress on or whatever. And then at the weekend, you get rewarded with a new start. I think that's how I'm going to go with it. I want to debate on it a few more days. So I might make like a little short, short little video next week or something saying how exactly I am going to do mania. But I think my current plan is a stitch sania with my owl forest embroidery 100 owl sal because that needs to get done. I have had that in my whips for like way too long now. I think it's my oldest whip now because um, I started it last like 
September, October. And then my Quilted Bees by Long Dog Samplers, Tulip House by Hands On Design, and Hello Petal because I would like to have Hello Petal done basically before I'm starting Hello Sunshine, which I assume is at the end of like May or whatever. But I'm debating on whether or not I, so those would be like the four and then my new starts would probably be some of the Etsy stuff I've just showed you and maybe one of these Lindy Stitches charts, probably beautiful things because hello. But the problem that I'm having is that I can't decide whether or not I want to do that. I want to do four whips where my goal would be work on them from like Monday to Friday and then at the weekend I get the new start. Or if I want to do all four weeks being 100 hours sell and the goal is to finish it with then the weekends being new starts to reward me for being so monogamous. But I just don't know because I feel like if I do that, I really, really want that project finished. But I also feel like if I do that, I'm going to make myself hate it, which will make it then harder to stitch. So I'm still, I'm still going rounds with it. But I would say expect me to be participating in some way in Mania slash Sania slash whatever. But I'm just not quite sure yet. Obviously, I am kind of cutting it close. It's like eight days till May, but <laughs> I have already kitted up quite a few things. I mean, I have my Winter Wonderland chart by Frosted Pumpkin. That's already kitted up. I've kitted up the pumpkin pie chart that I have from them already. So like I have things already that I could just start immediately. But yeah, I don't know. We, we shall see. Hopefully, I will be back or something next week with a little update on that just a, a tiny little one but I think we are actually at the end of this video oh my gosh I who would have thought I have so much stuff. <laughs> I have so much stuff to talk about just to run through it again three winners for the 3000 giveaway all Lindy stitches autumn royalty use the word prince hedgehog house use the word hedgehog and Edna goes to brunch use the word brunch and let me know what you're excited for with the weather changing and spring and everything like that. And if you're in the UK, things opening back up and everything like that. But of course, be safe. But also, other than that, taking the time off last weekend was really good, I think, to kind of recover from the vaccine. I'm really looking forward to going to the craft store this weekend. So Knit Craft was like, was like just a taste of the kind of joy that I'm going to get just walking around and looking at stuff. That's what I miss in the pandemic. It's not as much going to things as it is just looking at stuff. Like I really like to look at just other things. Whereas I have, you know, run out of that much like visual stimuli here in my house. I've seen everything before where it's like, I really like to go like, Ooh, what's that? So anyway, I'm very excited about that this weekend. And I'm gonna stitch, stitch, stitch on my Christmas wreath and hope that I can get caught up with that so that then I can spin my little, my little whip wheel and see where I'm going next. I might start spinning those like on my Insta stories just for fun while I pick it just to see, you know, if anybody's interested. Speaking of Instagram, follow me on Instagram if you are interested in seeing my updates in between my floss tube updates. I show progress. I'm pretty active in my stories, active in my DMs. I love talking to you guys. Thank you to everyone who messaged me over there. You all are so sweet. I had some people, you know, say that they were hoped I was doing all right because I was gone and that, you know, they hoped I was feeling better if they, if they had found out that it was because of the vaccine from my stories and everything. Y'all are just the literal best. I'm so lucky to have all of you in my life. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. That way I know that you're <laughs> enjoying what I'm putting out there. I don't know. And please leave me a comment about whatever. If you have any Q&A stuff for um, next time, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, anything you want to ask me about stitching or my life or whatever, put that down below. Also, if you want to enter the giveaway, please put your <laughs> giveaway entries down below. That will close two weeks time. And if you were new here thank you so much for watching and coming and spending a little stitchy time with me on my channel if you enjoyed it I hope that you subscribe and that you come back if you tap the notification bell you will get notified when I upload next I love you guys thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time bye mm -hmm.